Otherwise, I think he has to worry about keeping ahead upgrades. It looks like he has placed that second forge, but he's not continuing with weapons too. He really needs to continue with weapons too early. Okay, just now upgrading it, um, and that's going to be critical, uh, staying ahead in that regard. The Dark Templar now taking out the 12th block position by this group of Hydralisks. Carapace 1 now in the mix. Upper left hand corner, LZ, playing a, a macro game, which is not really uh, typically his style. He's got a ton of units, though, and he's really macroing up heavily. G5 to really weather this storm. He's going to have to rely on some very nice Psy Storm. And LZ actually pausing on that upgrade, so it looks like G5 might have an opportunity to at least pull ahead uh, in where I think the game is going to be won between those upgrades. I think whoever has that upgrade advantage will end up winning out overall. And LZ actually putting down his Queen's Nest. So it looks like he is planning on doing a quick switch to Hive as soon as he uh, maybe gets some of that Defiler Lurker um, Hydra combination here into the mid game. Uh, probably playing more of a Lurker Ling, which is why we saw that melee upgrade uh, right off the bat. Looks like Carapace 2 now coming along the way. Uh, G5 with a pretty, a pretty decent sized army moving out. Mostly Zealots, mostly High Templar, and really he has to worry about getting isolated. A couple idle probes here, uh, here and there, and uh, right now I, I think he needs to think about either taking another base, moving to that bottom right-hand corner, just to keep up with LZ, because LZ taking that 12 o'clock, taking that other, ba uh, other base, and it looks like G5 actually did try to take another base, but kind of at an outward position where he really couldn't hold it, having to cancel everything, trying to sneak it. Uh, High Templar getting in there and actually getting some nice side storms off, but not able to get a lot accomplished otherwise. Uh, G5 kind of in a precarious position because I don't think he can commit his army to defense any place um, and defend his main against such a large army. Uh, but at the same time, he needs to take an expansion to, uh, to keep up economically. Looks like LZ Gamer actually doing pretty... Yeah, just continuing with the upgrades. He's already teching to Hive right now. He's got a ton of troops all over the field. Looks like G5 actually is going to move out with this army. Very Dragoon heavy, actually. Very High Templar. Uh, heavy, so going to have to rely on, I would say, a bit of micromanagement to really pull through here. But LZ Gamer looks like he's actually in a great position to, to take this match, the way things are continuing here. Um, it looks like he's, he's going to uh, gonna get that nexus to that bottom right-hand corner and try to push up and uh, at least attack on his turns, try to isolate this half of the map in the meantime, although he really doesn't have a sizable army to do it. A couple of dragoons getting kind of isolated out there, too. Still no observers out in the field here for G5. It looks like he's got one just coming out of his home base. Uh, actually, no, it looks like he does have one in his main. He's got plenty of Psy Storm to work with, though. Um, and uh, continuing with, it looks like actually, yeah, going to press up attack here, make sure that LZ can't just basically cut the map in half, and then continue to deny that 6 o'clock with a flood of troops. Uh, G5, yeah, trying to run up. Looks like he's going to use that. I like that. Using that Zealot for spotting, then running up and getting two quick storms off to try to kill a couple units for free there. Uh, losing a couple high Templar that I don't think he wanted to, but you can see LZ just trying to cut the map in half um, and play defensively that way. G5 wanting to take another expansion to try to stay ahead of LZ Gamer economically. But uh, I think LZ's actually, if he can uh, saturate this rather quickly, and it looks like he's actually going to be able to, he's just going to end up having just too brutal an economy. He's going to have the Hive Tech, and I don't know that G5 is really going to have a lot to contend with it. He's already got that Hive Tech. I'm waiting to see, wow, more hatcheries being planted, uh, continuing with the Carapace upgrade, which is really going to be uh, stellar for him. It looks like G5 managing to stay ahead, well, managing to keep up with the upgrades. And the level 3 weapon's not coming along the way. It looks like he does have level 2 armor along the way, but you can just see the, the large force... Um, out in the field for LZ that can be replenished quickly, but G5 actually macroing beautifully, and wow, really macroing beautifully. He's almost hitting max here uh, in supply. I don't think that's mostly in probes, actually. It looks like some of the units kind of feeding out the field. He's decent probe saturation here and there, but actually a rather large army. I'm kind of curious um, where it's focused. Okay, it looks like he's managed to get out uh, getting out in the field, so a huge supply advantage here early on over LZ Gamer, even though LZ had a huge economy lead, I would say, early on, and had a, and has a ton of hatcheries to work with. And I think that tends to be LZ's weakness, is, yeah, late-game macro uh, tends to stumble on that a bit. Um, really, with that economic o opening, you should have seen LZ maxing um, quite a bit ago, just because he had such a brutal economy to work with, and now those Dragoons trying to push up, get a little damage done here and there, um, side-storming, just uh, maintaining a skeleton crew, even though they have, like, a large supplemental army um, behind. Now the Zergling is going to come running. Beautiful side storm there by G5 to clean those Zerglings up. Uh, really killing a lot of units there. Now the Zealot's coming in to kind of supplement this. And uh, G5 actually could, could press out on the move here. He's near max, and this is kind of his opportunity to go out uh, and win the game. It looks like some probes distance mining across the 6 o'clock. But uh, an LZ Gamer does have Defiler Tech. He's working on Consume right now, but he does not have a very uh, a comparably large army to work with. He would want to stay ahead significantly, especially with tech, especially with his unit combination here. G5, critically, though, needs to get some Archons, uh, I would say, in the mix to really deal with that swarm. 
particularly if LZ decides to transition back into Ultralisk, because it looks like he's going to stay towards a, uh, I, I think he's going to stay with a Lurker Swarm, uh, or I should say Lurker Link Swarm combination, though. Uh, LZ, uh, pretty big Lurker field right here, and it looks like G5 kind of stumbling through it a little bit, um, not able to storm as much as he wanted to, leading with the Zealots. Uh, and the Dragoon is actually not able to get a, a lot of attack here, so it looks like he's going to kind of hold back and a bunch of Zerglings running in to try to engage this army. Uh, G5 melting it rather quickly, though, and it looks like, yeah, he's still going to have a lot of Dragoons to work with, throwing one of his own High Templars, but still uh, not, not coming out too bad. Let's see if he can replenish that attack force rather quickly. LZ is really winning this fight, though, because he's doing what he wants to do. He's kind of defending that middle portion of the map and can even, uh, continue to flood units out. And this is what I was talking about in the early game. you got to watch the Zerglings flooding across the middle of the map, unfortunately getting a little too eager and running across uh, an army in the midfield that Archon killed before it was even able to get that attack out. And now G5, even though he had a maxed army and it looked like he had an opportunity, LZ with a concentration of forces in one spot, uh, just kind of cutting that map in half, uh, G5 not really able to press against it, so ending up uh, quite a bit in a very nice position, I would say. So let's see if he's going to follow up. I don't think it looks like he is upgrading drop. Caught it just in time. I'm kind of waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for that in that package. Let's see if LZ can, yeah, now kind of use drops across this northern border here, right along here. It looks like G5 already anticipating this right on top of it, and with perfect timing too, planting a huge amount of cannons along this northern border, completely anticipating this maneuver, um, realizing that LZ Gamer's plan essentially is to, pr wow, that's G5 for you, um, <laughs> is planning on uh, basically playing kind of defensive isolation across this edge right here, and then uh, into the late game uh, is just going to try to go for drops across this northern border. Um, he might have to transition the drops actually towards that secondary now. Looks like it missed a little bit of attack that uh, flooded into the corner. Looks like an overlord. Actually, I think G5 might have opened that himself um, for some troop movement here. But nevertheless, uh, G5 ultimately what he can do is if he just sits back and lets his units do all the talking for him, keeps up that Psy Storm, he will end up winning the game just because in a war of attrition, you know, straight Zerg versus Protoss, uh, you, you end up winning. It looks like he has that level 2 weapon starting to get a little bit risky, push out in the field. It looks like LZ, even though he had those two evolution chambers out early, didn't maintain the, the upgrades advantage. So G5 with this uh, slight upgrade advantage, I think he's going to end up playing rather well here in this late game, and he's going to be in a position to do exactly what he wants, what he wants to do. Uh, Psy Storm his own observer right there once again. Uh, not quite does manage to get that defiler before it manages to do any work there. Um, but still just kind of testing this border, killing a couple Zerglings. I'm running in, killing a, a Lurker to kind of in that uh, field advantage, and forcing LZ to produce a huge amount of Zerglings that are now running across this corner. Um, but yeah, that upgrade, that Archon, the Zealots in the mix, Psystorm everywhere, melting those Zerglings. Uh, it just feels like those Zerglings not accomplishing as much as they wanted to, but um, I think LZ thinks, oh, okay, this is working out in my plan. I'm keeping G5 back, I'm keeping him honest, I'm making sure he doesn't run into me. And then once my drops kick in, once I do this Doom drop, it's going to be all worthwhile, unfortunately, running into a huge cannon wall. Um, he might just have enough to do it anyway, because this is a huge Doom drop, uh, cr just uh, crushing here, and it's going to come down a nice swarm in the mix too, but dropping way short from where he wanted to. And critically, this is going to drain a couple of LZ's overlords, but this is also going to give him time to get this army back in position. You can see all those overlords getting taken out, LZ's late game plan uh, stymied quite a bit, and G5 playing that perfectly, that's almost wall hacks-ish right there. But nice, uh, nice anticipation skills on his part. Looks like his secondary is drained. But uh, really, LZ Gamer now has got to be a little bit befuddled. And I think he's going to want to transition to Ultralisks now. Looks like he's going to stick with, uh, and he can easily do so. Looks like he's now got the upgrade advantage. He's got that level 3 carapace. And G5 has yet to kick in that level 3 weapons. Still uh, coming along the way. So there's a window here for LZ Gamer to push in with a Lurkerling attack. Um, it does look like he has an Ultralisk cavern. He's still waiting. And he's actually, he could transition very quickly into Ultralisk. But G5 with an Arbiter in the mix, switching up tech. A lot of Archons, uh, a lot of Zealots underneath, going to start going forward and being aggressive before LZ is able to really replenish his supply. Still no Observer in the mix, looks like the it looks like he's just trying to attempt tax here. Let's see if, oh, beautiful Plague there. Uh, first of all, to provide some detection, but also to really make those Dragoons very, very weak and also make that Arbiter a little less effective. It can easily be picked off by um, Scourge. Actually, I don't even think we've seen uh, any sort of Spire, though, uh, late game, and... Um, it looks like a Dark Templar actually able to... Very nice late game transition. This is actually another very uh, G5 thing to do, is to switch it up late game, throw in some um, Corsairs late, maybe even get some Dark Templar in the mix, and see if he does. So another uh, the Defiler running up, getting kind of killed out here in the mid game. 
And very nice transition, really catching LZ Gamer off guard. He doesn't have the Hydalus to defend his Overlord count, and it's just kind of, it's going to uh, keep plummeting here. And G5, while he's distracted, he's going to run to the 12 o'clock position, destroying a lot of Overlords that look like they're set up for another drop without any units into them. It looks like they're caught in position. Some Ultalisks able to run in with some uh, a couple Zerglings here and there, and it looks like they're going to be able